I would now like to introduce uh, our guest of honor and our guest speaker, a world-renowned publisher, a former presidential candidate, somebody whose expert opinion on world affairs, the economy, and politics is highly regarded, and, I might add, freely given. <laughs> it is my pleasure and my privilege to introduce Mr. Steve Forbes. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, we value our new partnership with Jumeirah and uh, look forward to it. And uh, those properties that you talked about, well, what a nice place to go to uh, get the sorrows out of the way. <laughs> but, so, concerning the economy, which gets to the question of the moment, <clears throat> what in the world is going on? Why, when we had this extraordinary 25-year period, when you think about it, from the early 80s to 2007, when in August the credit crisis hit, never before in human history had so many people in so many parts of the world advanced so quickly as happened in that period of time. It wasn't just India and China, Central and Eastern Europe, if you take their growth rates as a whole, actually exceeded the Asian region as a whole. Parts of Latin America were starting to surge up. Part, many parts of Africa, even non-commodity countries, are starting to move up. Unprecedented, 70 million people a year joining the middle class worldwide. Absolutely never seen before in human history. And you look at the fundamentals in terms of innovation. In this country, productivity has been growing at twice the level it did in the 1990s. And even in the, this decade, where you know, some of you may be old enough to remember Rodney Dangerfield, the, the, the comedian, talked about getting no respect. Even though the U.S. economy got no respect, between 2003, until the credit crisis hit a little over a year ago, the expansion of the American economy exceeded the entire size of the Chinese economy. Now, China's growth rates were higher, but they're coming off of a much smaller base. The U.S. grew the equivalent of China in four and a half years. So absolutely phenomenal. So a lot of new players came in. Lending standards went in the proverbial you-know-what. And you got a, tr a real bubble, a real mania. You read about the tulip bubble in Holland. We got the equivalent here. And so they invented a new mortgage, a new mortgage called Why Have an Income? <laughs> and, and why make a down payment? Why pay principal? Why? Why even pay interest? You know, negative amortization was the fancy word they came up with. And so you got a classic bubble fed by two organizations bringing out the worst in the government and the private sector. So that's what happened when you breathe the two together. It's a disaster. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, using the government's implicit guarantee on the debt, went on a borrowing binge, because after all, Uncle Sam would guarantee it. No risk there, right? So they went on a borrowing binge at low rates, bought these mortgages, and they said, we're going to help affordable housing. We're going to justify our existence to Congress. And so, in a few years, a trillion dollars of subprime, less than prime mortgages were guaranteed. They kept $100 billion on their own balance sheets. And so, in 2007, the whole thing went kaboom. Credit crisis started. Well, not content with that disaster, the authorities decided to make a few more mistakes. They used to have something called the uptick rule, which meant that if you wanted to sell a stock short, you had to first wait for the stock to go up in price, put in the depression, so if the stock went down, everyone didn't pound on it and knock it into the ground. Well, the SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, in its infinite wisdom, repealed this thing in the summer of 2007, just before the credit crisis hit. And then, just to really make things interesting, they refused to enforce, and this sounds X-rated, but it's what they call it, naked short selling, because the positives are there. A lot of cash in the world, no shortage of liquidity, but fear, you clutch, it's like you could have plenty of food, but if people believe there's going to be a famine, you hoard the food. You're not going to sell it, you're going to hoard it. It's like a reservoir, full of water but frozen, so it doesn't go through the pipes. You got to get the thing thawed out. And that's what's beginning to happen, thawing out the frozen cash around the world. As that happens, things should start to get on the mend. So, I mean, John Kennedy understood the need for a dollar as good as gold. Reagan did. Bill Clinton did. He realized politically he was an economist. He looked at what happened to Jimmy Carter. 
who let a weak dollar inflation destroy his administration. Clinton said just for political reasons, he wasn't going to let that happen. Bush administration, biggest mistake they made on the domestic front. Then we're going to come back. Remember, bottom line, this crisis was made by mistakes. This crisis can be undone by a few proper remedies. As the saying goes, the world can only end once, and this is not it. This, <laughs> this, was, this was person made, not meteor made. Thank you.